those who were involved in making it come to life. Join us as we go. Behind the door. Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Doors for the Grey Rooms podcast. Today we are discussing Season 2, Episode 8, Down, written by D.I. Russell. With me I have the author, D.I. Russell. Hi. We also have the voice actor for the episode, Gabe Templin. Hello. And we have producer extraordinaire, Jason Wilson. What's up, everybody? High five. (laughs) <laughs> and I am the social media and Patreon manager, Brooks Bigley. Welcome, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have everybody here. It took us a while to get this all set up, but here we are. Um, Di, you're where are you? Where are you exactly located at right now? Okay, um, I'd say the most well-known place over this side is Perth on the west coast of Australia, ah. and I'm about. Three hours south, down in the uh, down in the country. So you are very low uh, in the southern hemisphere right now. Is it, and it's and it's daytime for you. It's nighttime for all of us over here. Yeah, it is just before eleven in the morning. It's bright and sunny. Yeah, looking good. Awesome. And Gabe, where are you at right now? I am currently in New York City. Woohoo! The Big Apple. New York City. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right between two bridges so i'm sorry if you hear a train go by at some point so that would actually be kind of cool i wouldn't wouldn't worry about that um well let's get the show started um di this is this is a favorite of thing for me to ask but what did you think hearing the story for the first time um the first time uh Unfortunately, I'd, I'd been out for the night, so I had maybe too many beers when I heard it the first time. So um, I couldn't really remember much the next morning. So I listened to it again on the way to work yesterday. Um, whenever a new Grey Rooms episode comes out on the Friday, I always save it for the, the Saturday when I work a night shift, and that's my my drive-in entertainment. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, another awesome job as usual. For the first time ever last night, I don't know that this sounds very um, self-indulgent, but a part of the story actually gave me a little shiver the way it was made. (laughs) Which part? Uh, When, um, spoiler alert, when I think that the the characters are talking, he's imagining the how he imagines the accident with the boy to have happened. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of reenacting this kid falling off the viewing platform and his mum seeing it all. Uh, And you have the screams in the... And yeah, and and then I kind of realised, oh, I'm getting like a chill off my own story. How does that work? (laughs) (laughs) That was a really good story, man. That's why. It was a great story. Yeah, it really tapped into kind of like, I mean, we've all played on a playground growing up. So you really kind of grabbed our childhood, turned it into horror, and then threw it in our face. So that was very well done. (laughs) Very, very well done. Um, Compared to season one when you did um, Summer Child, which also to me was an amazing story, Um, a lot of people at first are kind of grossed out, but... Ultimately, oh, yeah. every, ultimately, every everyone family. loved it. <laughs> everyone, when it all shook out, everybody loved that story because it was it was done very well. I thought um, this was different. Like, this was very rooted, kind of in an emotional sense. I think what inspired you, kind of, to look at a playground and say, "Hey, there's horror here. Let me write a story." What inspired you to do that? Um, well, first of all. With the difference between this and Summer Child, I think I wrote this around the time that Summer Child came out. Um, so I wanted to do something completely different. So the the tone is a lot more. It's more subtle. There's there's no gore. There's no there's no nastiness in there. The 
pacing. Summer Child was straight out the gates, just action from start to finish. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a really, I noticed this last night when listening to it again. It's a really slow build. Um, mm-hmm. Especially for me, it's a, it's a very slow story for me. And the, the information is, is kind of drip fed throughout. Right, exactly. So, yeah, so I'm, so I was, I was hoping it would be the complete polar opposite to summer child in in respect to like the the style of it um how did it come about as i say around that time when summer child came out i was meeting a friend of mine and he lives in the city and he was coming down into the country so we met up for lunch and we had organized to like kind of do a kind of like pitch session where we would write down 10 short story ideas, present them to each other, and the other person would, would pick which they felt was the strongest story idea. That's cool. And we would go away and write stories and come back. That's really cool. That's cool. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's my friend, Anthony Ferguson. If he's listening, shout out to him, because this story wouldn't have come about without his input. Hmm. Um, on, the, on the day, I went through all 10 of my ideas and he either outright thought they stank or was kind of lukewarm about them, every single one. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of looked at me across the table and went, so, any more? And I knew that he'd been visiting family in this town called Manjimu, which is about uh, a 45-minute drive away. It's where my wife comes from. Mm-hmm. And the slide that is featured in the story actually exists. Um, but but with the stairs all the way down to the bottom, it's a normal working slide. It's a great big three-story wow. construct with the, the metal tube. And I knew that he'd spent the day with his grandkids at this park on that slide. So I just went, oh, it's something to do with the big slide. And he just went, yes, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of went away thinking, I've got to, I, I, I have to write a story about a slide. Um, so with so those my two things: write a story about a slide and write a story the complete opposite of summer. Ch- <laughs> um, so yeah, and then this is this is what came out. Interesting. Yeah, you did you did a good job with um, <clears throat> like you said, you kind of trickled information. It was a sl- slow build, basically. Um, for me, listening, I love how I kept thinking. Like you had this way of like making you think it was going to go in one direction, but then it goes in another. Like to be honest, when um, she pulls out the rope, I thought, oh crap, what is she going to hang herself? Like she's talking about leaving this world now. But then Mm -hmm. it just kept going and it's like, oh no, 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 no. They're just going to climb up to the top. So (laughs) just that alone was like, okay, this is going to be an interesting story here. I'm going to get, I'm going to get jerked around here as the plot kind of, thickens and i mean well done very well done yeah Um, i like slow burns too i'm a fan of some slow burns and mm -hmm. this was a really well written one so yeah very much so um you were saying that you've actually seen this uh, by the way you can you can you don't need to worry about spoilers we can talk fully about the story because it's given that if someone's listening to this they've already heard the story so don't shortchange yourself here we can just talk about mm-hmm. whatever but you're saying that you actually yeah. um you yourself have seen this slide oh yeah is it this slide is the, the slide in the story is 100 percent based on a real slide okay so about a 45 minute drop okay but when you wrote the story um, you weren't like looking at, at the slide because it was so natural and it was so descriptive i could picture you at a park writing this horror story with a bunch of kids playing around going on this massive yeah. three-story slide it, it's one of, we've been there often enough um you know you can just close your eyes and, and, and picture the scene mm, okay uh and i, I have this we discovered this last year going over a really high bridge. I've never had a trouble. I've never had any problem with heights. Mm-hmm. Definitely not afraid of heights. However, um, when, when I, I have my two little children with me, I'm terrified of heights. 
through them, I'm so convinced that one of them is going to fall or one of them is going to hop a railing. Right. And I have to just grab hold of them. I was on the, I was on this really high bridge, just grab both hands and just march them across in seconds. Yeah. And it's become this real phobia. So all this talk of um, in the story of the little kids somehow falling off. Um, and why would you send a little kid up there on its own? Right, right. Um, all those fears are kind of legit. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, I any parent you. would feel that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I got a little kid too. And actually, that part of the story uh, always kind of terrifies me because I get a visual, you know, my little, my guy's only six, but I've taken him to playgrounds and stuff even when he was younger. And, and I was always, I'm always that overprotective dad that's hovering around him when we go to those places, you know? So mm. yeah, I feel you there. Yeah. One thing I appreciate. My kids have been on. Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, one book. I was, oh, I was, my I was just. kids have been on the side. As I say in the story, it's completely, it's completely safe. There's no way um, anyone could fall off. But yeah. Well, yeah. You mentioned yeah, like even them. what's her, um, Fran, uh, mentions even how wasn't there like like um uh, not a was it a wooden partition but it like went up to very high like to shoulder level it was a very high like even the characters point out like how could a child fall over this it's nothing mm -hmm. to be afraid of really yeah although I I did try uh, I got this feeling again when I listened to it last time. at one point Steve refers to it as like the mouth of the slide as a serpent mm -hmm. uh, obviously because of the, the the kind of shape of the slide too to kind of lend that impression beautiful description now when i was listening so was that i said that was a beautiful descriptive yeah I, was, I loved it that was that was a great way to describe the mouth of the the slide like a mouth of a, a serpent wonderful sorry oh, that's, that's okay um when i said last last night it, it kind of read like a almost like a three character story with the slide kind of just sat in the background like like a a, a curled up snake in the background yes. and if this was like a play you can see the snake right there and you get the feeling it's going to do something at some point it's just waiting for its moment um and yeah, and the way the story was uh, was presented, it it was like yeah, the, there was a third character just waiting in the background. Wow, I didn't even think about that, but now that you say that, that makes absolutely perfect sense. Um, yeah, uh, Steve describes it like the mouth of a serpent that it was hungry um, from. You know, clearly there, Fran and Steve are alluding to their memories of what happened when they were little to the poor boy that quote, you know, disappeared in the tunnel or in the, in the slide, I'm sorry. Um, and how, how quote hungry the serpent kind of is, you know, the mouth of the, the top of the, the slide being ready to, to take Steve in. Um, yeah, very, you're very good at writing. I, I, I love it. I love it. I love your, I told you this on Twitter. I love, even just like when you said how like the, the heat of the summer day was stored in the rubber of the seat of the swing. Like that's such a descriptive, yeah. beautiful yeah. description. Oh my, I just love yeah. that scene. And yep, um, that, that catches me. Yeah. And, and Gabe, I'm so sorry. Here. Gabe's here, the, the no, actor. Okay. Yeah. You're the one that said that line. Gabe, what did you think of this story? Like uh, as you read it, as you were preparing to read, you know, in, into a microphone to act it out, like, you were so measured and tempered um, as the character and, and kind of thinking back on your memories also as you stood in present time with Fran going through it. What did you think recording this? Yeah, I, I think kind of going along with what we were saying here, uh, D.I. did such a good job of creating this descriptive world that uh, it, it really took me back to this playground that we had in my small town in Kansas that I grew up in. It was a small town of 700 people and there was one slide in the middle of this park um <laughs> but you know you you think about the those lines like the the rubber stored the heat from the day and i think every single person could remember mm -hmm. going to the playground yep. during school and go oh yeah that that uh swing was really hot that day right, right. right. yeah <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, it, it just really put me in that place. Um, and I think in, in a way it very much became, uh, a memory play in a way, uh, where it, it be with that measuredness coming out of it. It's, it's just thinking of all those memories and letting that memory flood over you. And that sort of takes you on a second ride beyond the, the surface level story going on. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And when you were um, when you were reading the story, like, were you feeling nostalgic about anything? Like, were you suddenly like, okay, this is how I'm gonna, this is how I'm gonna record this? Like, how did it affect you reading the story before, like, leading into you acting it? Yeah, I mean, it did uh, make me nostalgic because I, I kept thinking about that that little park in this tiny little yeah, town in Kansas. Right. I gotta send you and, a picture, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and they had this, um, they, they would do this festival every year called the Harvest Home Festival that was every fall. And I feel like, especially in the fall, when you're on playgrounds in the Midwest, it, it, every single thing that you would touch was full of the heat that had stored up mm -hmm. from the summer. And the, <laughs> yes, sir. Hundred yeah, mm -hmm. the 100 degree days. Uh, and, I'll, and I remember going there when I was, you know, in grade school, middle school or whatever. And there was a trolley there that we would climb up into and all these jungle gym things. And so it just really put you in that moment. Like um, when they're up on top and uh, Fran starts speaking, you know, loudly out at the world and you're like, no, stop it. Somebody's going to hear you. It, mm -hmm. We've we've had that. And I could think of moments where we were doing that at the park as well. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was, I can relate to that. Yeah. Very nostalgic feelings listening to this. Um, and again, like how DI kind of weaves you through almost false forks in the road, making you think it's going to go in one direction. Um, I really kind of wanted to discuss like, you know, you're, you're the author, DI, so we, you don't have to answer anything. We're not like saying like, please explain this now, but... The, the first time I read it, well, you, you read the story, of course, it's, you, you get a certain impression. And then, you, then you, you hear the fully produced story, and then you get another full impression. So the first time that I read it, you know, I understood the story, but with, you know, still like, hmm, I'm still confused about that ending there. And then you hear it, and then you're like, wow, this is absolutely an amazing story, but, oh, man, I think I'm closer to kind of figuring out what's going on here. And then you hear it a second, you got to listen to, you, you, you were effective at making a story that you have to listen to at least two or three times to really absorb all, because you keep hearing new information as you listen to it um, again and again. Um, if I could possibly ask you, is there anything supernatural about the slide? Or is this just a tragic story? Are you able to, to answer that to us? No. <laughs> no. With the, the, the just the general idea, the kind of real focal point is you know, what is what is the deal with the slide? What is going to happen to this character at the end of the story? Mm -hmm. We know he's going to go in. What, what happens to him? Mm -hmm. And I played around with so many ideas. I think one of them... It sounds quite ludicrous at the time. Was um, some people at an old folks' home were campaigning about getting the park shut down, and it's something about the little kids that went down the slide and never came out. There's going to be a few of them, uh, and they went. There's some kind of time thing, and these old people were the kids that went missing. But it just it got too complicated and mm -hmm. very scary. So that got thrown away. Um, other ideas were that it was a living thing, and as he went down, he would be eaten, digested. That was another possible thing. Holy uh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> it was a serpent all along, of course. <laughs> no, some kind of monster. Um, was that like the, the pits of Sarlacc or something like that? I can't remember that from Star Wars. <laughs> from Star Wars, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> or the sandworm from Beetlejuice. Oh, that was, that was I, I know I just said that wrong, and I'm going to get just raked over the coals. So <laughs> the Sarlacc pit, I think that's what it was. The Sarlacc pit. So sorry, D.I. <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, um, 
Oh, maybe, you know, Descent into Hell, um, something a bit Hellraiser-ish. Um, but not, nothing... I think it's... Has anyone read On Writing by Stephen King? I have not. And he, no. he, he mentions that uh, you could, through a story, say, hey, guess, guess what's behind this door? And really pump up the, uh, the dread for what's behind this door. Eventually, you've got to open the door and show the reader, ta-da, it's this. Mm-hmm. And they go, oh, well, you know, yeah, that's pretty horrific, but it, it could have been worse. Uh... Um, <laughs> And he kind of preaches that you you have the reader in the palm of your hand until you've got, you've got to show your cards and go. This is what it was all along. So I kind of thought, well, how about now we just just leave it yeah. open ended. Yeah. But but as you, as you say, Brooks, about when you hear hear the recording, I thought that I never had when I wrote the story was that. The, the people going down the slide would, would just keep going mm-hmm. like forever. Mm-hmm. Almost like Gary's story the previous week, Grey Fries, where they're stuck on the train forever. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah, Isn't just that a loop. Cool? Yeah. Isn't that neat how that happened? That is so neat, yeah. yeah. The way that the, the ending, the down, down, and it, it goes it goes on longer than, you kind of think that's going to be the last down. And then you get another one a bit quieter. That's going to be the last down. And it just, stretches the ending and it made me think of this poor guy just falling forever right so so it's forgive me good. that i never thought of him you did such a good job on this that i thought of that poor kid who went before him 15 years prior who is now probably a skeleton just falling down this thing man <laughs> forever That's where sliding my- <laughs> I thought about that kid. I, I I looked at the main character of this like you dummy. You didn't listen to this story. And then this, 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 this little kid, I was like, oh my god. So you know, you did a great job. That was a great story, guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I love the so ambiguous good. ending of it though. That that to me is one of the things that is like, oh, this is so cool. Mm-hmm, it's like right. what's what did happen? Mm-hmm. Well, that, and that's the beauty of the story is that it's not even about what ended up ultimately happening. It's not about the destination. Yeah. It was about the journey because Steve and Fran didn't know. And in that world that they lived in, everyone knew that this boy disappeared. Nobody knew where, you know, there was no definitive answer. So what was the purpose of the story? Fran and Steve were there. Well, I guess Fran was there to kind of investigate, to kind of, let's go no, back no, and no, revisit no. this. She was going to kill herself. That's what she was going to do, man. <laughs> you, you, okay, well, <laughs> I, I I like to think that there's this mystery of, like, figuring out their childhood. Clearly, she came from kind of a, a tortured childhood. You know, you'd kind of describe her family life. Um, she broke her leg as a kid herself on a slide. But it kind of seemed like maybe... Maybe there was something missing from her life that she needed to fulfill by visiting this this slide again. And so then Steve comes along because there's clearly this this past between Steve and Fran. And it was just so beautiful how Steve was almost like, Let me take this bullet for you. Let me I'm gonna I'm the one that's gonna go first down this slide. I'm not gonna let oh, you do it. Boy, did he. he did so <laughs> he well. went he went down, down, down. <laughs> um but, so yeah so so i at first yeah i my my day job is I'm, I'm a psych so everything i've i write tends to have a flavor in there and i think that none of them really believed the story none of them none of them believed this thing actually happened mm-hmm. right um fran she it, it there's the other thing that we don't know what's happening. Something's really kind of rocked her world at the moment. He thinks it's the family. She 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 can't tell him what it is, and we still and we still don't know what has happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and previous to this, the only the big trauma in her life was when she fell off the slide and broke her leg. Mm-hmm. So this is a case of I can't. I can't address what is happening to me at the moment, but I can address what happened to me in the past. By going down this slide, I'm going to get over that childhood event Mm -hmm. because I can do, I can deal with that, but I can't deal with this. 
Interesting. So she she needs him, uh, be it just for his help or as a witness or support. Um, yeah, I th- I don't think she she's trying to build it up to be more dangerous than it actually was because in her in her mind it was quite a dangerous thing, right? Like emotionally and. So she did this to, uh, what's the line in there? To put the old ghost to rest because she has violent spirits to deal with now. Right. Sorry, I, I don't want to get too, um, too psycho babble. <laughs> no, by all means, I love go you, ahead. You left it so open. Left it so open. Yeah. I, I had, my, my brain was running around. I was like, did she kill her family or no? <laughs> like, right. Like, I just, everywhere. I was telling, I was telling Gabe before we recorded, like, you can totally because of how it's open ended, it lets the listener or the reader kind of take what they want from it. And I was telling Gabe, like personally, I was like, hmm, I wonder if Steve and Fran are actually ghosts of kids who also died on a playground and they were meeting up kind of just to fulfill some kind of prophecy um, that maybe they didn't know about. Because there, there, mm. there was just so many different ways that you kept throwing out, well, it could go this way or it could go that way. In the, in, in, in the plot, and, and I was thinking, like, okay, let me wrap my brain around what's going on here. Maybe they're ghosts, and they're just revisiting the place where they died while also uh, recounting another child who also died on the same playground. So anyone can kind of take what they want from it, which makes it an excellent story. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a great story. Obviously, you can tell D.I. by all the different branches that are coming off this tree. That was your story that you have definitely planted the seed of creativity and imagination in the brains of all of us, man. Because mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. I, I caught myself. I listened to this today when I was out doing my job and I was captivated. I was sitting there listening to it. And, and it's funny, I heard this so much while I was producing it, and, <laughs> and, and I still was listening to the finished product with, with uh, your story, and then with Gabe and Lindsay, them doing their, their acting on it, I was just absolutely enthralled by this, and I, I wanted to find out, find out more about uh, Fran, and then I really wanted to find out what in the hell happens, you know, but, yeah. but I, I thought about things of like black holes or wormholes, you know, or or, or all this other cr- just crazy stuff. But man, that was a really good story. And actually there were a lot of parts in there that made like a uh, goose flesh pop up on me and it mm-hmm. gave me chills. And it would, which is really cool being a guy that, that produces it. When I go back and listen to it again, the, the story and the voice acting was, was so good that um it, it, it was new to me even after I've heard it as much as I have, it was really well done. And uh, that's a credit to the story by DI and then Gabe and Lindsay for just acting that out. Like didn't say great job. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Speaking of Lindsay, Gabe, Gabe did Lindsay. you two record yeah. together at the same time or cause normally everyone kind of, you know, satellite recording, you know, everyone's in their own place record, mm-hmm. sends it in. Did you two record together in the same space? It's it's funny. No, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, normally we would. We usually use the the setup that uh, we have here to record, and then we just re- take turns recording. But um, she happened to be at the SAG building here in in the city, and they have some dedicated audio rooms in there. So she actually recorded in an entirely different space than 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 I did, and I recorded at a later date in in our space. So. Uh, yeah, it was it was a weird deal this time, but that's <laughs> no. funny. Interesting. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so so now you, so so technically, right then and there, y'all, you know how it feels to to be me getting the sound from here and the sound from there, and making them sound the same. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Hoping that you can match up the environments in any some any semblance of a way to 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 make it easier for anybody. You guys did a great job, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, give her a high five too from us here at the Gray Rooms because she I has will. delivered just phenomenally. So yeah. yeah. Sure. As, as have you. I'm not trying to. Uh, no, no, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, hey, Di, okay. did you enjoy you hearing say, uh, Gabe's, you know, rendition of the characters that you wrote? Well, I was ju- just going to say that I never. I don't in the story. I didn't kind of overtly say kind of how Steve is and how he should deliver his lines, but he, mm-hmm. in my head, he's this quite sarcastic 
you know that they th- these two characters have known each other for, for a long time mm-hmm. right so he can be a bit sarcastic with her sure and gabe's delivery of these just how can i put it the flat sarcastic lines of oh good you brought a rope i forgot that <laughs> yeah that was kind of to, to perfection and my absolute favorite line that makes me smile every time i hear it. it's so simple it's just in the delivery she's saying oh i can hear the ghost of the children shut up fran <laughs> oh, I'm disappointed. I, I, I thought it was going to be part where, like it's a fucking slide, yeah. friend. <laughs> Get over that it, friend. Was, it's a fucking slide. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate that. And I think it's a testament to uh again, the writing. We we've, we've dumped praises on you on the on on the writing for this as as well deserved as it is, but uh, I I think being able to relate to it as well, you know, uh, it, it, this being a small town kid in small town parks, I think anybody's going to relate to that. And I, I, yeah, I definitely was shy growing up. And anytime I was with somebody, whether they were a close friend or not, I, I was very more reserved. But yeah, you would have that sarcasm because you've got that that mm. bond with somebody. Ah, that's how we do it in the Midwest, man. You know that? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, now I really loved your delivery on, on a lot mm-hmm. of things. And actually, if I if I may, what I thought from the voice acting, and and I may be wrong from this, but I really got the feeling that Fran and Steve are are friends. They've been friends for a long time. And I felt a little tension there. I felt like th- maybe they're friends, but, you know, I, I felt like, man, well, Steve's out here on a swing at night because Fran sent him a text. <laughs> what dude is going to do this other than a dude who has, well, well, yes, maybe he's a good friend and that's possible, but I'm, I'm sorry. I think that Steve liked Fran and, you know, like he wanted to be out there and uh, could hang out with Fran and all that other stuff. And then he took the bullet for her because I think Steve loved Fran. There's a hidden love story in this, everybody. Just, yeah. just so you know. It was a very protective yeah, feeling I, towards Fran. So uh, listen to this on Valentine's Day next year with your lady <laughs> or, you know, significant <laughs> others. And uh, yep, you can thank D.I. and Gabe and, and, uh, and uh, Lindsay for the romance that will ensue. <laughs> that will ensue. Thank you, the great. Room. Don't forget the rope. We're bringing people together. Don't forget the room. rope. <laughs> <laughs> Don't exactly. forget the so, That's a fucking slide, friend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Gabe, do um, what other yeah. um acting roles do you play? What other what other podcasts are you, or or not even podcasts, but just in general, what other things do you perform on? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I do have other podcasts. I, I run my own podcast called Just Press Playhouse. We've produced shows like Time Trip. Um, we had a little small short thing uh, that we did last summer called Kid Pros about uh, kids party clowns. And it followed a day in a life in, with them. Uh, I've been on 1994 pod with our, our buddy Graham Rowett. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, and I, I've, I pop up here and there, uh, throughout, uh, other, other things and I've, I've done some live shows here in the city. Um, I'm work doing some readings on a show that's trying to get mounted hopefully by the end of the year. So hopefully that, that happens. I'm usually involved in a, a monthly, it's called drunk texts. They do, sh- uh, classic shows that they've made modern. Hey, so <laughs> uh so uh, i thought i want to be involved in <laughs> drunk come text. in it's the first friday of every month um they, they've taken things like uh mean girls and they've made it a classical text so the meaneth girls <laughs> or um, uh oh, I was try- they did a halloween one but i'm blinking on what they called how Hall- the the halloween two gentlemen of lebowski uh those types of things Instead of it's the dude. just a, a <laughs> yeah it's just a hoot. Uh, everybody gets drunk. It's a lot of fun. Uh, part improv, part staged reading. Wow, so I kind of show. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, that's kind of what I do. That's awesome. Again, you you have such a um, a powerful metered, measured tone. Like in Summer Child, it served really well for being this calm person just trying to get through this action. Um, 
Yeah. And then you do the same, but not quite the same, but still this very measured, metered person visiting his friend who's got a rope and wants to climb up a three-story, you know, slide where some kid died. And it, and it, yeah. and it, it's, it's really awesome. I, I really like your style. You don't overact, but you're not underacting. It's very um, pleasing to the ear. You have a very pleasing uh, voice. So I really, I'm going to look into your other stuff, definitely. <laughs> yeah, phone I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I know. I'm for sure going to check out this uh, drunk talk conversation time. <laughs> I, I, might, I might have to turn this into like, uh, uh, okay, I'm going to have to have a shot glass and something handy. Because you need an excuse, something. man. Come on. No excuse. Take a shot. No, take a shot. Yeah. <laughs> he said a word. Take a shot. <laughs> By the way, uh, drink, drink, you, drink. you've been in other stuff for us this season, haven't you? Yeah, I did. Um, oh, I forget. I'm sorry. I'm blanking. I was I was Deputy Yoke, yeah. and I think the uh, it was a pre season premiere season. Episode. It was the first. It was yeah. the first episode. It was the first, first episode. Okay. Jailbird by Bo yeah. Chapel. Yeah, yeah, Jailbird. I love Bo too. Oh. Bo writes. Bo's an amazing well. writer. Absolutely. Uh, look alike, right? That was yes, the one yes, yes, last yes. year that he wrote. That was that was also fantastic. oh, and his novel. Oh my goodness, forty seven is amazing. So, so the point- the point of that is that uh, Gabe is a repeat offender, and we hope that we can keep that happening because I really enjoy working with uh, with Gabe, you know, and I, I enjoy, uh, matter of fact, I enjoy working with Gabe and Lindsay. Uh, I, I love the quality of audio that I get from y'all. And then D, uh, DI, your stories, I have absolutely always found myself just captivated by these things. So please, Submit another one. I want <laughs> more. I, I am addicted. Yes. You're a great dealer. I'm hooked. How much is it for another fix? <laughs> Bring it up, buddy. <laughs> oh, he's peddling stories. <laughs> uh, there's another one already, already there. Uh, and again, in, in true Grey Room style, I, I've gone for something completely different again. Oh, I love it. So give it to and, us. And since. Since Summer Child, Summer Child was written before the Grey Rooms, mm-hmm. um, with with Down and with this other story, when I when I've wrote them, I've uh, written them, I've had kind of the audio in mind that it, it's it's a bigger part of the the process. Um, like for example, with with Down, the the creak of the rope, that the hitting the the scaffold and it's clanging. Yeah, the, the audio plays a much bigger part since working with you guys. Awesome. Well, we're, we're glad that we're actually influencing some of your writing. Hopefully it's helping, you know, hopefully it's like uh, expanding your world because I tell you what, you're, you're expanding mine, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, as we, Which, um, way, uh, oh, sorry. I, I'm waiting, I'm, I'm waiting for the D.I. Russell uh, Grey Room story about Belongalo. Uh, I think I said that wrong. But uh, they, they, it's like they, it's down there. What, what is it? What is it? Di, help me out. It's a uh, is it Belangolo? 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 You know what I'm talking about, right? No, damn it. <laughs> no, <laughs> Belangolo. <laughs> Say it slowly now. <laughs> Belangolo. It's, it's fun. It's a, a friggin' um like uh. It's a it's a str- it's a main thoroughfare through like an open land in there. Uh, I know it's in a. I think it's in Queensland. So never mind. Uh, I'm editing this out. No, I'm not. I'm gonna leave it in there. <laughs> Edit that in post. About, they, they had serial killers and stuff down there. It was nuts. So yeah, whatever. I've, I've listened to a lot of that. Um, <laughs> well, I, well, my, my friend who helped me help help me with the idea of this story. He's he's a serial killer expert, especially in Australian serial killers. So he will, he will let me. I thought you were going to say he's a serial killer. I was going to say, wow, that's <laughs> firsthand knowledge right, right there. <laughs> this is a very genuine story. Be- <laughs> and change the names, change the names. I want you to hit on. Or do- I, I would not be. <laughs> Well, so, so, so as we, as we get, uh, as we start to wrap up here, um, DI, what, uh, pro- so you just kind of told us what projects are you working on right now? What, uh, future things can we send fans to, uh, in terms of what you're working on? Okay. Um, 
this year I'm trying to get I, I got so many books that weren't released previously. So this year I'm trying to release a book every month. Oh wow. And that's I'm keeping up with that at the moment. Um currently working on the the book that, that I call the book that won't end because it just won't end. It just keeps going. It's the longest book I've ever written. And I just want the bloody thing finished. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm working on at the moment. How many books do you have under your belt right now? Like how many to your name do you have? Um, oh, good question. Um, about a dozen maybe. Oh, wow. Oh yeah. Well, if I may jump in here, uh, uh, DI is the former vice president of the HWA. He is a member of, association are you not um i was the just so i don't get sued um <laughs> um i was the, the vice president of the the ahwa which is the australian horizon association ah, he's a, a big dude wow. big dude we had a we had a big time author here y'all <laughs> that's amazing great <laughs> very very honored to have di you. are very you honored. familiar with um uh, another famous horror author well, famous to me, uh, famous to No Sleep Podcast, actually. Uh, C.M. Scandrith, do you know who that is at all, by chance? No, I don't. That's quite a unique name, I think. No? Okay. Um, yeah. she, she's just a very popular um, author on the No Sleep Podcast. Uh, writes just the most amazing, mind-blowing horror stories. Um, but she's from, actually, she's from New Zealand, I believe. So kind, oh, of, well, kind of adjacent to Australia. Oh, I'm sorry. My on. bad. My bad. <laughs> come on. That's I'm American, so my education is very low. I apologize. You can't do that to an Aussie, dude. That's a Kiwi. I'm sorry I what? messed that up. That's, that's a backhand special right, right. there, Brooks. You I'll fire that. myself, okay? I, I'm done. I'll leave now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but di i know i know you have a website or something where people can check your 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 books out dude because i want to check them out so tell me come on oh, well usually i just do everything through twitter i'm most mostly active on there um people want to look me up that's um di russell mania yes. all one word i love it <laughs> you have such a great twitter <laughs> handle <laughs> yeah, WrestleMania. <laughs> and for sure we're gonna we're gonna add lots of links for you in the show notes so fans will definitely be able to find where to get your books um where to find any other things that you're working on stuff like that so absolutely gabe what are you doing what are you working on man yeah um more gray room stuff hopefully eventually hopefully more yeah i i mean I'll start off by saying thank you for creating such a, a, a wonderful community uh, that's so inviting and, and the two of you are fantastic. And uh, I think it, the success of Grey Rooms is a big uh, mirror to just the two of you and everything that you guys, you all have created with the Grey Rooms. And, and I think that's so telling of the talent and everything that you've brought in with the writing and everything. So first of all, awesome. Thank you for that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, like I said, I've got some other podcasts. Uh, Just Press Playhouse, we're working on season two of Time Trip. Hopefully, by the end of the year, we'll have that out. Um, I've got a web series that'll hopefully be out by the end of this year. I didn't mention that, that before. Uh, and then Drunk Texts, you can find that from www.drunktexts.com if you're in New York City. <laughs> Come out, get drunk. Jason's on it it's right fun. now, checking it out. Already, I am already on this. <laughs> There you this go. sounds amazingly <laughs> awesome. Like, it's like, why, why didn't I have this in my life 20 years ago? Kind of. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, Gabe dot Templin. You know, I'm, I'm there. Sweet. And let's not forget Lindsay. Yeah. Speak for your yes. wife, please. Yes, um, she's also Ooh. does drunk texts. That's right. As well, Which, by the way, everybody, uh, if you get the chance, Gabe Dop Templin, congratulate him uh -huh. and Lindsay Kelly on their nuptials. Man, yes. good job! Thank you, good thank job. you. Yes, we're thank you, thank you. We're a weekend. We're going strong. I think we're. Well, I think we're good here. <laughs> um, One week out of a thousand more. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, you can find her at Lindsay underscore Kel, Lindsay underscore R L E, I think is what it is on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, Lindsay Kelly's a very common name, so you can find her. For, but uh, yeah, she's she's busy. She does that. She's on our podcast. She 
um, does some voiceover work professionally too. So uh, you, you've probably heard her in other things. So sweet. Yeah. She's awesome. She's awesome. Yeah. yeah, man. Make sure that, make sure she gets a big, uh, gray rooms, high five. And so I would when, when I say that, uh, don't, stab her or anything i mean <laughs> i was gonna say do i dip my hand in like pig's blood or that's something that's what a gray room's high five is come on man you, you know what you do you, <laughs> you just walk up just be really quiet like this and then you give her a high five and then you go and then just look at her face and you go gray room said that just it's totally totally jason, totally jason's fault <laughs> it's fine. I'll, I'll take the blame. I'll take the blame. Matter of <laughs> fact, the next time the dishes aren't done, and she's like, "Where are all the dishes?" You go, "Friggin' Jason." <laughs> you know, and, and I'm cool with it. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> I can blame you for the dishes. Yeah, all right. Fine. <laughs> cool. There you go. <laughs> but well, but but as a producer of this, I, I got to say that the story was awesome. The uh, voice talent, uh, Gabe and Templin, for the second time, it. Well, at least a, as a pair for me, I was able to uh, work with your stuff. Um, great material, very professional, easy to work with. This was so fun. This mm-hmm. was this is still one of the most captivating stories. I mean, the Gray Friars really got me on a level. This one really just sucked me in. I, I was really sucked into this story, and and I listened to it a few times and. Man, really well done. It was a great pleasure to work with DI again on another wonderful story and then with Gabe and uh, mm-hmm. with Lindsay. I, I love this. So mm-hmm. thank you guys ever so much. The, the, the success of the Gray Rooms, as you say, Gabe, is not necessarily just the Gray Rooms. It's mostly those who are involved with it, which are yourself, DI, and Lindsay, Brooks, everybody. Uh, the, the success of the Gray Rooms is because we have great people who bring in such wonderful things that we get to work with. So thank you. That's my honor. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And it's a good team. And thank you. Thank you, DI, because you um you wrote a fantastic story. Just amazing. I'm so happy that we can add this to the Gray Rooms canon. Uh, it, it really kind of touches. I feel like we've kind of touched on a lot more slightly emotional stuff uh, this season versus just being just ramming horror up your ass in the first season. We've really kind of we've kind of we're growing. We're growing, and and you helped us, um, especially with this story. It just it it pinged on all the right. Um, notes it, 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 it called into question our childhood it really made me think listening to the story um just, I just love you, Dad. <laughs> yes <laughs> you did a great job son Sorry. um so yeah so thank you so much for for writing this story and giving it to us di and gabe oh gabe you're awesome i can't wait to to hear more of your stuff um you know, I was impressed by Summer Child, but I had I didn't know who you were at the time, and I just you know then we moved on to the next actor. But now I'm like, ooh, this Gabe guy is is great. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see other things that you work on, as well as seeing how maybe we can get you to come back and even do other things with the Gray Room. So right, you. Uh, I'm here. You're with us, man. We got you. That's awesome. I'm here for you. Yeah, well, awesome. well, the thing is, if you're a gray rooms listener and you go with the drunk, the, the drunk texts. Yeah, that's right. Jeez. Yeah. You, you go with that. Uh, make sure that you mention gray room sent me here, yo. And then uh, he's got to take a, a shot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, we do a shot before every act. So if you're there, you you can definitely cheer me on and make me take a shot. You can you can definitely do that. <laughs> That's so, so cool. What a concept. He, <laughs> Any he excuse to drink. Short of that. He's, <laughs> he's like, I'm, I'm done. I'm not gonna. Wait. Anyways, thanks again. You, I, I much. I love you guys so much. Yeah, it really was yeah. wonderful. And uh, thanks to I ever so much for getting us so early in the AM, bro. No, mm-hmm. Seriously, yeah, that's right. It's like almost—is it? I don't even know. It's like eleven in the morning now for you. Yeah, go. No, no, it's like noon now. Go have some of that gross Vegemite. You guys ever had that stuff? So, <laughs> oh no, no, no. <laughs> oh, okay, good. I love you, man. All right, we're good. Then you and me, are, we'll be friends forever. <laughs> that stuff is terrible. <laughs> and well, we just lost like fourteen listeners. Nah, and- maybe fifteen, but that's that was that's okay. <laughs> And on, and on that note, uh, 
Thank you, gentlemen. With us today, we had the author of Down, D.I. Russell. We had the fantastic actor, Gabe Templin. And we had the producer above all producers, Jason Wilson. And then there was just me, wow. Brooks Bigley. That's so nice. <laughs> it's so nice. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Anyways, well, everybody, hey, enjoy your days and your nights. Not right, forget oh. JM. You have to give JM a little slap in the butt real quick. Oh, yeah, you go slap. Go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. And? And. Get on your booty, JM. Good job. There you go. Good His job. His butt is always so slap. red. He's always getting slapped. Jesus. <laughs> all that amazing music. And on that note, thank you, gentlemen. Have a great night. Have a great day, whichever it is for you, whichever hemisphere you're in. And yeah, take care. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Join us each week after every episode for another edition of Behind. <laughs>